Ken Trahan along with Lenny Van Gilder. It's our first NBC weekend review brought to you by First NBC Bank with 31 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond. Do your banking at First NBC Bank. Well, the NFL draft is over. The Saints had five selections, and I thought they maximized what they could do with five picks, Lenny, and I thought they addressed needs without reaching. Exactly. And I, some of the things that the Saints did are some of the types of things we've seen them do before go after some guys from non BCS schools, to go after, uh, you know, guys who have a tremendous amount of upside who you may not know, you know, a lot about at this point have certainly not uh, not maximized their abilities at this point. And they also address some some positional needs as well. And, you know, some of the some of the more interesting stuff were things that happened after the draft with some of the things we heard out of Mickey Loomis, some of the undrafted free agent signees, most notably Ryan Griffin of Tulane. So all in all, I think the Saints improved their football team this weekend. I do, too. No one ever really knows. Everyone's an expert and has an opinion on it. From the standpoint of the players they got, I thought they addressed needs without reaching, as I stated. And I also think that they got some players that may be able to contribute and contribute immediately. But again, who really knows until they set foot on the field? We shall see. The 2013 Zurich Classic of New Orleans is history. Billy Horschel, a first-time winner. Boy, this tournament is famous for that, Lenny. But at the same time, you can see this coming. This guy has been one of the most consistent players, if not one of the top three or five most consistent players on tour this year. Yeah, he jumps into the top ten in the FedEx Cup point standings with the win. He's made 20-something consecutive cuts in a row, the longest streak on the tour right now. It was just a matter a matter of time before he broke through and got to win a tournament. He did it here. A tremendous stretch of golf coming out of that rain delay. It's a tough, tough job. You know, those guys had a long day on the course yesterday, and I guess a long day on the golf course beats a you know beats a long day in a lot of other places. But uh, you know, still in all, they you know anticipated there was going to be weather yesterday, so they started early, uh, went off of both tees. They had a three-hour rain delay in the middle of the day. Came out. They get to the the leaders get to the 18th hole. Another weather delay, so it turned out to be about a almost a 10 hour day on the golf course for Billy Horschel and the the, the leaders. And then what a finish! You talk about winning a tournament. He won the tournament because points did what he had to do. He put the ball in a cup and and forced Horschel to birdie, and he makes a long putt to win it. Yeah, 26 feet, I believe it was on 18, and it was wasn't one like he had made. The rest of the week, those ones he made six birdies in a row from seven through twelve, the, the longest streak on tour this year, uh, and that's you know a lot of those were just almost of the tap in variety because he was just sticking everything close. The greens were soft coming off of the rain, you know it was almost like target practice out there to a certain degree, and and he was hitting his irons tremendously. But the the putt on eighteen when he had to have it, knowing he had to have it because you know points was in close with basically a tap in situation. Uh, he knocked it in. Yeah, ties the course record there. You talk about winning a tournament. That's how you win a tournament. Great job by Billy Horschel. And he reversed uh, the trend that happened in Houston at the Shell Houston Open where D.A. Points edged him for the title. This time around, Horschel gets it over points, but they're both looking great this year. And then, of course, we take a look at what else is happening. LSU losing their first weekend series, first series of the year for that matter, to South Carolina. Errors hurt them on Friday, excuse me, on Saturday, and then a balk call and a very inopportune time by Fred Cannon. Bad call in that situation. Certainly led to that. And on Sunday, just give South Carolina credit as they pitched great. Well, the thing you find week in, week out in the SEC is you're going to play good teams. And if a team comes in and plays well, it's potentially what can happen. South Carolina played very well this weekend. Tip your hat to them. You know, you'd, you'd rather do something like this now then go through the whole season, having not lost a series, and then you get into postseason and you're feeling the pressure a little bit. So, you know, that's losing uh, coaches, you know, coaches will tell you you want to win every game. But sometimes, especially in a sport like baseball where you play so many games, losing a couple is not a bad thing to help get your team refocused. Well, when you look at the SEC, Vanderbilt's the best team at this point. And then you've got Arkansas, you've got Alabama, Florida's playing well now. Bottom line is LSU's played all the tough teams that they're going to play to this point in the conference. Right, and they've got Florida coming into the box this weekend. they got to go to A&M and then finish with Ole Miss. That's their three weekends remaining at this point. So uh, still not easy, but it's been a very tough go here for the last three weeks, having to go to Arkansas, go to Alabama, and then play a very good South Carolina team. Don't forget that team's been in the championship series of the College World Series the last three years. 
and uh, they could be good enough to get back to Omaha this year based on what we saw this weekend. They get a congratulations to all the state softball champions from this past weekend, including John Curtis, who won it in 2A in Sulphur, and the state baseball playoffs continuing in all classes, and we'll have a 5A by district game featuring the third seed, Brother Martin, against 30th seed East Ascension, live at sportsnola.com Tuesday night, 7 p.m., and on WHNO Channel 20 on Wednesday at 3.30 PM. In fact, in five A, five of the top eight teams are from this area. It could be, uh, you know, could be good news for the folks at Tulane uh, who host the five A tournament if the seeds hold and you're able to get all of these local teams there. But Brother Martin, Jesuit, Hanville, Destrehan, St. Paul's, all in the top eight seeds. If that holds and those those five teams all make it to Tulane a week from Friday, it's going to uh, be some nice crowds out yeah, there. What a time that will be. We sure do look forward to that as we move forward. And, of course, we always invite you to check out our shows. We've got our Spotlight Show Monday night, 6 p.m. on WHNO Channel 20, where we spotlight some top sports figures from around the area. So make sure you do that as well. And, as always, for all information, sports it's sportsnola.com. Lenny, as always, thanks. Hey, we'll see you later this week. All right, that's our First NBC Bank weekend review brought to you by First NBC Bank, 31 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area. Have yourselves a great week. For Lenny, I'm Ken. God bless you.